In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. Previously on Living Free Alaska, we share the progress of our first phase of construction on the homestead. And then we take you on a boating adventure to a remote island lodge in the far reaches of Prince William Sound. Well, good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon. We've had a pretty slow go here. Today is July 23rd and it's a Friday afternoon and today is moving day as in we are moving on our property. So we are currently cleaning up our little slice of heaven that we've called home for the past two and a half, three months in our friend's yard, uh, Mike and Bobby. We are gonna miss this view. However, we're gonna really, really enjoy being on our own property. So we're packing everything up. I pretty much got the RV ready to go. Gary is getting ready uh, with all the outdoor stuff. And within probably a half an hour or so, we will be pulling in slides and pulling out. We've got to go to the dump station uh, and do a full dump out and rinse because we don't have water yet at the property. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of that. And then we're going to get over there because at 3 o'clock this afternoon, our shed on our RV parking lot area is going to be delivered. So lots happening this afternoon. We had no idea any of this was going to really happen today other than possibly moving. Uh, but we've got a great window and our shed is going to be delivered. So why not? So today is day one of living on our property. Can't wait. It says the front might be low a little bit, but side to side we're good. I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. So even though we got the snap pads, I'm still going to put some blocks down because this is just freshly laid and rolled gravel. So it's still a little bit soft, but uh, I think we're home. Woohoo! Oh my goodness. We're here. We're home. This is it. This is where we're going to park it until winter. And then hopefully once it gets cold and we can't do it outside anymore, our shop will be ready and we'll move into our shop, which is just, well, it's not right now, but it will be on the other side of this berm. So, welcome home. Are you home? Yeah. What about you, Spirit? Are you home? Now that we are on our own property, we knew we needed some extra storage capabilities to keep some of our possessions out of the elements and also give us a little more room to expand outside the walls of the motorhome. 
we turned to a local shed company out of Wasilla for a 12 by 16 building that would be perfect for our RV area. Eventually, once we are moved into the house, we would like to turn this shed into a dry cabin for summertime use. Maybe turn it into an Airbnb or just another space to host friends and family. For now, it has turned into a garage of sorts as well as a nice workbench area for Gary while we still live in the motorhome. We have to say, the most impressive part of this building was the trailer it was delivered on. It was fascinating to watch it move left and right, backwards and forwards, all by a joystick controller. We ended up placing two rocks where we wanted the building to be placed. And with the agility of this trailer, they were able to place it exactly where we wanted with ease. If you're a local Alaskan and are looking for a pre-built shed, cabin, or greenhouse, we highly recommend Better Built Buildings out of Wasilla. We love our shed so much, we just might get one of their greenhouses too in the spring. We're still debating if we want to build one ourselves or take the easy route and have one made and delivered straight to our house. Only time will tell. We have a house to get finished built first. By the way, this video is not sponsored. We paid for this shed fully and it was worth every penny. Welcome to the berry patch, or as we call it, the swamps. This is out behind our house, and we are out today picking blueberries. It is August 1st, and the berries are everywhere. Now, when we were up here in 2019, I picked a whole bunch, we froze them, and then I hoarded them. And I would yell at Gary if he tried to cook with them. They were basically for my drinks and my pancakes. But now that we live up here full time and I have the opportunity to pick every year, we can use the blueberries a little bit more. Here's a good patch of them though. As you can tell, I'm trying to pick the bigger ones, but sometimes the little ones just fall off. And well, it's not like they're rare, kind of everywhere. But mixed in with the blueberries, we also have some low bush cranberry. And that will be ready to pick after the first frost. So this is one of the new things I'm really looking forward to about living up here and being able to gather some of the berries that are uh, native to this area. There you go. Only about, what, we we're in here maybe half an hour? Maybe. And over four and a half cups of blueberries. And I think we're gonna head back home now. I don't know. I don't know. Go that way. Go that way. Go that way. Gary's on the quad and I'm in the Ranger. You ready, girls? Once our lot was flat and beautiful, it was time to dig it up again. Over the next several days, our foundation footings were prepped with board and rebar in preparation of the cement truck's arrival to pour our foundation walls. Due to our water table issues and our slab on grade foundation, the footings were over engineered from a standard 16 inches to 24 inches wide to help with any water issues that may arise. No pun intended.
The very next day, the cavalry showed up and three courses of cement block was not only laid, but the cement poured to secure our foundation. What an achievement that was considering the size of our building. picking and I just came across this mushroom not gonna touch it sure it's not good for me that sure is pretty awesome We are now back at the stage of backfilling our foundation and making it pretty again to just tear it apart again. But this next time they dig it up, it will be for good reasons. Underground plumbing comes in next. While the construction crews are busy at work on the foundation, Gary tries to stay out of the contractor's way and keeps busy by chopping firewood from our yard for our new woodshed Gary built for our nightly bonfires by the RV and when friends stop by for our first surprise overnight camp out in our driveway. We got out and uh, are walking the perimeter of our property today and actually we're on a, a game trail right now. We've come up from the swamp following this trail all the way up. I got some blueberries. Yep, we went to look for blueberries. There are not many berries down there. Blueberries down there. Tons of cranberries. Holy cow. Yeah, we might have to call this cranberry acres. Yeah, right. We're going to head up this trail here. You can see the pink ribbons. That's oh. our that's our property line. I see raspberries. And there's raspberries over here, too. Oh, and these are something. I got to look those up. Oh, those red ones? Uh-huh. I, I think. Those, aren't, those are don't eat ones, I think. No, I think they are edible. But raspberries, those are some good raspberries. Oh, look at there's yep, more over there. over there. Yeah. Okay, raspberry um, patch off the garage. I'm back there too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little zips everywhere. Oh, for this is this is this is fireweed. It didn't bloom this year for some reason. Here's his bloom, but look how tall that is. This is crazy. <laughs> well, there's another fireweed. There's another fireweed. Yeah. Go at... stand by it. I mean, I'm. I'm six foot tall. Look how tall that is. Look how tall that is. <laughs> Got a nice little patch of it right in and there. And as you can see, look at this guy. Summer's almost blooms over. Blooms are all but all but gone. The type the, there are no more blooms on the top. So when those are gone, it starts turning red. And then the seed comes out on these tops. And the seeds are kind of cool too. Oh, there's a really there's a huge mushroom over there. Can you, can you see it? All the green in that oh. little can over there. Look at that. I've seen the actual popped out of one. That is one. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Don't touch it until we know. Yeah. Once again, we're back back to the trail. This is an established game trail. We didn't make this trail. This, this was all done by... This was all done by, by moose and other creatures that, that frequent the area. So. And this is back. what our property looked like. Right before we excavated. It was this thick. So early on in the season, I think, I don't know when it was. Was it March when we were here? I think, it was, I think it was March. We found Maybe this April. stump right here. They had what I thought was cranberry growing out of it. And there was a cranberry, an old cranberry hanging off of it. And sure enough, look at that stump full of cranberries. Nature at its best right there. That's really cool. So we're down in a different location of our property right now. We're kind of right next to the road, our access road. And this is an area that we are going to leave undeveloped um, purposely, just to give us a barrier. But we wanted to walk through it 
and see what kind of berries and what other, what other stuff we can find out here. So far, tons of cranberries. Tons of cranberries. And uh, I want that blueberry. Looking for the elusive blueberry. I haven't found them yet. There's some big red berries over over there. Right Check there. that out. Cranberries. Cranberries aren't ready yet. Generally, after the first good frost, the cranberries should be ready. Uh, right now, they're really tart and not quite as soft and juicy as they could be. So we'll give them a while. There's going to be a ton here, so we're going to have to find some recipes for cranberries. That's yeah. for sure. I don't have to forage. They're just <laughs> here. Everywhere. One of the reasons why we chose to build out in Houston is the proximity to the playground out behind our property. In the summer, it is swampy marshland with the Little Sioux being the main source of water in our area. And in the winter time, it's the jump off point to hundreds of miles of winter snow machine trails headed in every direction imaginable. Every summer, our neighbors take a ranger ride out to the Little Sioux to fish the banks for spawning salmon. And we got the invite to join them on this Sunday adventure. So Gary and I jumped in our brand new Polaris General for its maiden voyage out to the river. It was a fun day learning the ins and outs of our new ATV and how it handles the swamps of Alaska, as well as getting our fishing lines wet and hopes for a fresh salmon dinner that evening. We struck out at the river as the salmon hadn't reached this portion of the tributary quite yet, but regardless, it was a great day spent outdoors with our friends and neighbors living like Alaskans. I have no worries. We have made the right decision on making Alaska our home. We want to thank you for sticking around this long in this video. It means the world to us. If you have any questions about anything you've seen or just about Alaska in general, please leave a comment below and we will be sure to answer them for you. We would love for you to also like this video as well and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you are notified when we put out our next video. Thank you again for watching. Until next time. Next time on Living Free Alaska, the house build is finally moving along with all our plumbing and in-floor heat installed and we take some time to play tourist for a weekend when some of our best friends come up for a quick weekend visit. Thanks again for watching as we catch up the vlog to real time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post again. And lastly, we hope you'll join us again next time here on Living Free Alaska.